hey welcome guys my name is james with this beautiful crazy life welcome to my live stream before we start this video i just want to tell you a little bit about what this channel is well what do we do here at this beautiful crazy life well we try to talk about complex issues the big topics of the day current events politics economics media um, movies music everything and we try to filter it through a christian lens on how i understand the bible what i've been taught and and we try to work things out and figure out what is the best way to approach things to, to ask questions use critical thinking to in order to figure out what we as a church need to do to just like be better christians to spread the gospel all those amazing things there and so if that type of stuff interests you guys hey make sure to like and subscribe and tell me where you're at in the chat so let's go ahead and start this countdown and let the video begin seconds and counting. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Hey guys, it's me, James, with this beautiful, crazy life. Welcome to the channel. If you're new to this channel, what do we do here? Well, we talk about everything. Politics, religion, media, um, music, uh, whatever, world events. Whatever I feel like talking about, and we try to do it through a Christian lens. I want to empower the saints. I want you guys to just go out there and just be better and think for yourselves and to love Jesus and love people, and that's the goal of this channel. And this is going to be a really quick video. I want to talk about something, about a conversation i had with someone and it's regard to this hoodie i'm wearing that says jesus and therapy this doesn't feel like a very controversial statement but for a lot of people it is right so i went to a church service a few days ago um like it was like a thursday night young adult service super great time awesome worship awesome message great fellowship it was really great because i you know i work from home and i was sick so i i spent a lot of time at home by myself not really speaking to a lot of adults so i love getting out and just seeing people like there's nothing that beats a, a human hug am i right I was wearing this shirt and for the most part got pretty good um reception from it people liked it they liked the color because the color is great and i look great in this color um and people like the message you know but then i was speaking to a younger man and, and he's younger than me by quite a bit but he was telling me that um this shirt just needs to say jesus and he tells me his opinion about therapy and why it doesn't like secular therapy and is even skeptical of christian therapists and 
and um, it was just, you know, I just listened to him and, and we just had a conversation about it. But I, I, the reason this made me think a little bit is sort of the problem we have in a lot of Christian circles among a lot of Christians who are still really skeptical of therapy and counseling and mental health awareness because I don't think they understand what therapy is, right? I did therapy first time back in 2013. I grew up in, I, I've told you guys a story before, grew up in a very abusive household, had tons of trauma, not able to really regulate my emotions super well. I was a non-Christian then, and secular therapy really did save my life. I was depressed. I was suicidal. I thought about several times about ending my life, and... um I finally called the crisis helpline and then I finally went to a therapist and they helped me a lot. They got me some antidepressants um, and really helped me going through all this stuff I was going through, all the things that were building up. One, feeling like a failure, um, having a hard time finding a job. Just there were so many things going on and it was super helpful. Of course, I hit it, didn't tell anyone, I didn't want anyone to think I was crazy, but it was one of the it was really helpful for me and sort of took me on a journey of mental health, mental health awareness and getting people the help they need and helping people go through that. If you follow me in my personal life on just like my personal Facebook, which I'm not going to give you guys, but um, <laughs> some of y'all are crazy. But um, I talk a lot about mental health and my struggles that I've had and what's helped me through it and why I think it's very important to do counseling and to get help uh, mental health uh awareness out for we can break the stigma because think of all the people that die from suicide every year and and alcoholism and failed marriages and all that stuff there not just non-christians but christians and i know some people don't believe christians can have depression because i made videos about christians who are dealing with depression and i was told i'm not a christian and they're not christians and all that stuff there and i find that really weird because like i think we can agree that christians sin so why can't christians have mental health problems i think we all agree that christians get sick and but yet we don't believe their brain could be sick or that their circumstances could put them in a certain spot that they're not good and maybe doing therapy can help someone lift them up I don't know. That's that's so strange to me. Talk to the people who might feel alone in their like Christian circles because in some Christian places, the idea of therapy um, just seems ridiculous still. And even outside of, I mean, it's like, I know we talk about break the stigma a lot, but even in the non-Christian world, we're not super open. We don't tell a lot of people about our problems when we feel like we've been depressed or suicidal. These aren't things we, we share with people. These are considered still shameful. Okay, and I find it really ironic, right? So many people have gone on stage as church pastors to be like, we can't close down the church because people are becoming depressed and suicidal, all those things there, right? They will go on and on about that. And also they're making a political statement, but I've been silent about mental health issues prior. Just saying, now people want to take it you know, more seriously when, you know, they can't do what they feel needs to do or when it's attached to some political party. I mean, I didn't agree with those shutdowns. I thought they were terrible. I think most people will say that's one of the greatest policy blunders of all time, but that's a different conversation. But I just find that interesting. Um, but yet they will be super skeptical of medication or mental health or any of that stuff like uh, therapy and counselors. And I just find that really not good right like i think people get something confused here a lot of christians therapy is not the answer to everything we all know therapy isn't going to solve someone's sin issue or reconcile them to god we all know that therapy doesn't answer some of the biggest questions what's the meaning of life why is there evil in the world all those things there therapy might not help by understanding a lot of those things but it can help with other things it can help you understand like maybe why you've had a problem with alcoholism maybe why you have a problem with going from relationship to relationship to relationship maybe it can help you wonder why you're having those intrusive thoughts maybe it can help you deal with your bipolar polar disorder and, and get you somewhere where you need that type of medication maybe it can help you understand like maybe the reason you're depressed because you're on instagram all the time and you see what everyone else is doing you're playing a comparison game maybe therapy can help you reconcile what you need to do to talk to your kids better or your spouse or your parents maybe therapy can help with a lot of different things I just don't understand why there's still people we have to argue with them in this conversation right and and this is crazy because 
people will sit and they will listen to their pastor give all types of advice and they won't say well that's just not directly out of the bible pastor you should just read the word we will never we don't ever say that <laughs> right you know we ask for explanation we ask for people to actually help us that's why churches spend money on courses like financial peace university why because yeah the bible talks about how to use your money but you know what the bible didn't have about there about checkbooks and debit cards and credit cards and interest rates so you get an expert and you talk to them about it that's how we do recovery programs in churches we don't just say oh well now that you know jesus you're just healed from your alcoholism some people are but like we literally dedicate tons of money to cyber uh you know uh, sobriety programs in churches but then we'll be like oh therapy doesn't work we'll tell people you need to do premarital counseling i won't even marry you as a pastor if you don't do premarital counseling and then some of the same churches oh therapy is the devil or something you just need jesus you guys get what i'm saying here if you're wondering why i'm upset it's because I think some people aren't using critical thinking skills and because they don't understand something because maybe they've never struggled through it or maybe because they don't think they need to struggle then they can't figure it out not even understanding that a lot of times a pastor when you're having a one-on-one -on -one with one of your people as a shepherd sometimes you're literally giving them advice to help them and therapists will do the same thing but they're in experts in better areas that's all it is it's literally can save people's lives so if you're a Christian and you just feel like, oh, I, I need to go to therapy, but I'm so scared what other people think, don't be scared. Do it if it helps you. Do whatever you can if you need to save your life, if you need to end depression. You pray, you go to a therapy, you exercise, you eat well, you get off social media, you stop watching all that porn, you stop worrying about what everyone else is doing, and you focus, you know, like, gosh, ugh. I'm just, and sometimes it can take years. It can take years to grow. One of my favorite um, writers, Pete Scazzaro, who wrote the book Emotionally Healthy um, Spirituality, says that Jesus gets in your blood, but sometimes your grandfather is in your bones. Those things we pick up from our family of origin that just pass down from generation to generation to generation. And as many of them are Christians who suffer from things like careerism or super high unhealthy ambition or relationship to relationship problem. Um, yeah, they stayed married 40 years, but their marriage wasn't even happy. But at least they stayed together. We can break all these cycles. We can look forward. We can take control of our lives and we can do so much better than what any other generation's done before. And this could be it. This is what I think the church needs to focus on and do is more mental health. So if you at any point tell me therapy is bad and you went on and on about why you know you should never close a church down because people's mental health, but then you deny when someone might have uh, problems with suicide prior to the pandemic shutdown where you had no empathy for them then i don't want to hear from you anyway guys i'm sorry this video seems kind of negative i'm just frustrated i'm frustrated because i know people need help and healing so my prayer for this at the end is that all those suffering from mental illness lord i pray that you heal them i hope you pray you put them in communities that will care for them and leadership that is just you know just preaching the word but also providing resources to help them out anyway guys may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord shine his counts upon you and be gracious to you go in peace and sin no more and serve the Lord with joy.